I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today's April 14th, 2022. And in this video, I'm going to show a set of four dinosaur magnets I designed in OpenSKit. Okay, so we'll just show these off really quickly. I love these magnets. They're kind of fun. So I'm getting all crazy on this crossing thing. But, you know, one thing before we go in, just to show visually, and I'll go over this some more, <clears throat> is as you print this up, it's got the, you know, the space here to go put the magnet. But then you got to stop it while it's printing, and then you put the magnet in there. And there you go. Now, one thing, if you're doing a bunch of magnets, I do a lot of magnets. You, you know, you got a north side and a, and a south side. I watch, I'll say this wrong. They always put a dot on here, and I think that means the north side. I might be wrong about that. But at any rate, before I ever put them in, I check them against my other magnets. So I make all my magnets the same way. And so I always double check. So I kind of, if they're like that, not repelling each other, I got it the right way. But anyway, there we go. So here we go. We got all four of them. I think they're kind of cool. And there they are in all their glory. We've got a really super strong magnet in there. I think they're pretty cool. You should be the back again. Oh. Yeah, it's a flat back. Cool. Nothing too crazy about it. And then you can do this. Because I'm a dweeb. Okay, with that, uh, before we go to the next section, we'll show you how with these mega magnets, which I like, they hold a lot. So here, I have 25 pieces of paper. So the magnets I use are pretty mega, because I don't like the little wussy magnets that I normally get on stuff. So I go a little overboard, but you know, they're not too hard to take off. But Put it over on this side. Oh. Boom. Nice. So at least they see magnets over on this side. Now sliding down a little bit. And also magnets are, if for those who may not be aware, aside from their own per their own strength, they're also affected how thick the metal is. So I see this kind of going down a little bit. And it could be the metal here is a little thinner than the metal here. So the more th the thicker the metal versus the thin, you'll you'll get a better attachment. But it's a fridge magnet, so anyway. So let's go over the numbers and everything else. Okay, first some URLs. So I've already put this up out on printables, and I'll put a link in the show notes, but here it is. Uh, I've also, for those coders amongst you, even though the open SCAD is there, uh, here's a, I'll put a link to the gist that I put up on GitHub. Now, another thing, here is the magnet I use. I use a rather powerful magnet, and it's, uh, you can get a, a, a weaker magnet, it's a similar size I've used in the past, but I really like this more powerful magnet. It's 24 bucks for a set of 10, so, well, I like, I like this magnet a lot, I like it a lot. Uh, and also for those who might be interested, um, this is the PLA I'm using in the yellow. It works for me. There might be a better yellow color, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Okay, so with that, let's get going. Now, like I've said in the past, um, I'm probably going to do a more in-depth video on how to build this. This is more a video just kind of showing it off and also how to tweak it because in this case, all open SCAD, you can make some changes. So we'll kind of show what's going on here. So here, you know, you can just take it as is. It's a real simple dinosaur magnet, uh, and part of it, is if I go down here, let me, and again, I'll, I'll do a more detailed video, but if I make uh, the yellow a little more see-through here and run that, you can't see up here, but you can kind of go down here and you can see there's that cavity, which does not reach down to the bottom. So this is a little deceptive in the, the view, but that is where, um, it's where the magnet's gonna go. But anyway, so we'll, so there you go. So the main thing I wanna show here is tweaking it. Now, yeah, you can change the size, make it bigger, but I doubt you really want to make a giant magnet. I think this is probably a good magnet size, but if you want to make it a little bigger, you can tweak it. And in fact, if I just made it bigger like that, that's tweaking that size, but it's not tweaking the size of where the magnet is. So you probably are good on that. Um, also, another, well, this could be really, really important. Um, what I would suggest when you first print this is print to a point well, you have to stop it anywhere where you put the magnet in, but I would just do one, stop it where the magnet is, and kind of measure it and see if the magnet you got fit, because you might need to tweak it. You might need to adjust it, because what you want it to be, you want it to be flush, so it covers over it. You don't want it sticking out. And you also want it a little snug, but not too snug. That way it's not rattling around. And this number works for me. 32.2 .2 is the diameter. But if all of a sudden, if it's not big enough, uh, you might want to make it bigger and you can tweak it. Also, another thing is the height. This is a thicker magnet, 3.3 works for it, 
But if it turns out that you want to use the weaker magnet, like there's another version out there I've used before, it's a little bit more of a weaker magnet, probably half the power, I'll just say that, I'm not sure what it is, but you know, still a good magnet. Um, but rather than that depth, you might want to do a different depth. Rather than 3.3, it might be 1.8. So you could, you could switch out a different magnet in here. The other thing is the depth. This 0.8 depth is how, I should probably, it's not really the depth. It's actually how far it is from the back. So the further it goes away, the weaker the magnet pull will be. Now, the closer it gets, the stronger it will be, but also that layer gets thinner and thinner. And if you get it too close, the magnet will overpower. If you just had one layer and you put the magnet there, you'd probably you'd probably rip the thing apart when you try to take it off. So you need some depth. But all of a sudden, if I really wanted to keep the same magnet, and let's say I wanted it to be weaker, but not by a whole lot, I could just change this to 1.2. It's gonna be further out, and as a result, it'll be weaker, even for the same magnet. So those are some good things you may have to tweak. Uh, let's see. Let's see, what else you might need to tweak? Okay. The next thing, I'm not going to get too crazy about this, but you might want to do different dinosaur or different thing like that. So what I have is I have a pterodactyl. So I'll come in here and just kind of show people. You, uh, This is set up so it looks for a file in the same folder as this. But just to make life easier, I can go grab this SVG pterodactyl file, drop it in. I know it's pterodactyl, but I like saying to quote Starfire from Teen Titans Go, I like saying pterodactyl. And so I can just take that and say, you know, I'll, I'll remove this import because I really, I'm, I, I'm using it as a variable. I don't want to use the import part of it. So I'll say SVG equals this and remove that last little print from the backside and comment this one out. And now we should have a pterodactyl. Uh, in which case, I'm probably going to change that scale a little bit to a different image. So we'll say 0 0.2, 0 0.4, Ooh, way too big, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, okay, uh, 0.24, probably better. And then I probably need to nudge him, so he's crossing over there. And here's the, the adjustments. That's the X adjustment and the Y adjustment. So we'll say negative 2, which will move him a little more this way, negative 3, call that good. And now I could do dinosaur crossing, keep it as is. But if I want to change the dinosaur, I can go down here where it says dinosaur, and I can say pterodactyl. Let's see if I can spell it right. Okay, and just change that to pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Uh, but now if I do that, we can see the font as is is too big. So I can change the font size. Looks like it's 4.1 right now to 3.8. We're going to run that again. Oh, still too big. 3. Uh, how about 3.2? Uh, 3. I want to make it a little bigger. I'll say 3.6. Let's say I like that size, but I need it's cover. I can lower it down. So here's this X Y move. So there's the X, there's the Y, and rather than being 20, I could say 10, which is too low. 16. That's about right. So there you go. So now. I got a pterodactyl version. So that's how you can use it if you, you can just use it as, as the SD, SDL files are there for the four that I made. Um, I would suggest using one of those first to see how it works. But then if you want to start tweaking it, the OpenSCAD files are out there. Okay, so let's see. Oh, next, if you do use this, what you're gonna want to do is you gotta be concerned about the slicer. In fact, let me see if I can render the pterodactyl fast enough. Eh, it goes pretty fast. Okay, rendering's done. So we'll just save it as an STL file. Let's see. We'll just call it that, okay. And then we'll bring up, there we go. Okay, so the slicer, it's important to know what to do on the slicer, because you gotta tell it to uh, do some, you need to tell it to change the filament at certain points and also to pause. So I will drag this pterodactyl over. Oh, wrong file, boom, there we go. 
and we'll say 15% infill, fine, PLA, all this just, just generic settings, and we'll say slice now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very top here. And for those who don't know, right in between here, as I pull this up, it'll just show the layers that are in between this top arrow and this bottom arrow. So I'll pull it down. I'm a little too far. I'll pull it right here. That's the what I want to be black. So I'll hit this plus button, which will tell your printer to stop, uh, unload the filament, and give you a chance to load new filament. That way you can change the color. And I can right click on here and say edit the color and make it black, just for visual, just so I can see it here in the slicer. And now the next thing is I do want to do several layers of ye yellow. And I've got my cheat sheet over here, which looks like I went to 6.95. Okay. So if I drop down to 6.95 and hit plus, and do the same thing, make it yellow so I can see it, visualize it. Uh, and then I can go down here, and I could leave the rest of it orange, or I, can, I can't right click for, the, for where it, the filament it starts out with, I can't change the color easily by just clicking the button down here, but I can go to filament, click on the filament, and change it to black, which you normally don't want to do because you really can't see a lot when it's black but it gives me a nice little visualization. So um, there you go. Now you can see here I have several layers of yellow because I went from black to yellow and it takes a while, it takes several layers so that color shows up really well. Um, so that's what I did. Now a couple other things I did. Uh, I still haven't, I need to go do some tests to see if this is better or not. But if you can look, there's some little, you can see some little spaces here that might show up, but might not. So what I did, which I know works or here's here's a little feet you can see right there what I did on the printer settings is I went to infill and I enabled ironing and ironing you can kind of think of like using an iron it's going to try to make that top surface uh, nice and smooth by going back and back and forth on it now I don't want all top surface I just want the most top surface so I'll say top most surface only so only that black part and the reason I do that is because it takes a while to do it it's it's a time it's a time sink. Okay, so we got that. I'll have to slice again. It's got to prepare it. And now we kind of see all those little dots, those little spaces went away. So I need to go do a test one of these days so I can compare the two to see really if it really honestly helped or not. But it doesn't cost me much time right now, so I'm going to go with it. Okay, so there we go. Oh, ooh, one more thing I nearly forgot. Let me go back to the filament settings. Let me change it back to orange so I can visualize this better. We also need to put in a change, a filament change point where the, um, let's go on the very bottom, so we can swap out the magnet. So here you can see, here's the hole right here, the cavity where we're gonna put the magnet in. And if I go up, go up, boom, you can see now it's getting covered. What you need to go do is go to the first line where it's being covered, in this case it's 4.25, and go, and you need to, um, well not go back one, I'm gonna say this opposite. Uh, what you need to do is right on the first line where it's being covered. That's where you put, click on this and make a change point. Now I say that, it might seem a little funny, but the change point starts before the layer starts laying down. So what's going to happen is it will get this layer at 4.1 completely done, and then the next layer before it starts, it's going to shoot the filament out and ask you to replace it. Now in this case, we're not going to change the filament, but we do need to, we need that pause. So the filament will come out, you'll put the magnet in, then you'll put the same filament back in, um, unless you want to do a different color, I suppose. Um, you could, I guess. No reason to. But then, then it moves on and fills everything up. So, boom. There we go. Now slice it and save it, and you should be good to go. So with that, now let's go over the numbers. So I did four of these at once, which is kind of fun. Now it went pretty fast. So it took five hours and 25 minutes to print all four. It took uh, 4.7 cents of electricity and it weighs, now they each weigh, um, altogether it weighs 0.136 kilograms, but that's also accounting for the magnets. Now the magnets all weigh, let's see, 0 0.024 kilograms. Multiply that by four, subtract, yada, yada, yada. So for four of them, it comes out to 0 0.04 kilograms. And at $20 per kilograms, comes out to 80 cents for all four. So 20 cents a piece in, in filament. Now, you need to add the magnet price back in because that's part of the whole price. So these magnets are $2.40 a piece. 
I'm doing four, multiply by four. So it comes out to $9.60 for all four magnets. So in total, to get all four of these done, it was $10.40, or roughly, you know, two fifty a piece. I know it's a little, you might as well say three bucks a piece. Three bucks a piece to print these out with the magnets. Um, and I think they're great. I think these magnets are, I like, I just like 3D printed magnets because I hate the wussy magnets. I love these things. And it gives you a chance to customize some things. And it's a good way to show off to friends and family. You give them some, I've given lots of magnets out as gifts, 3D printed. And every time I go to someone's house, they're always on the fridge. So it's a good thing to give to other people and encourage other people and kind of make them see that 3D printing is pretty neat. Okay, so with that, let's wrap this up. Um, with a reminder that 3D printing is an adventure you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this, you can teach others, and you can make amazing designs. So design it, engineer it. I've been working on some more design ideas. I have an idea for a customizable carabiner. If you search for a 3D printed carabiner, chances are you will find a design by DDF3D. A few years ago, I paid him a few bucks to take his design and put IQS.com on it. Since then, I have printed out well over a thousand of them and handed them out at the homeschool conference. In fact, this year, I have already printed eight, pre-printed 800. But I want something with my newer logo on it, so I have an idea. Reuse his gate as is and figure out the space I need to replicate the oval and latch and then design whatever I want around it. I think it'll work. And then I can make some neat custom designs, like maybe a heart carabiner or a square one. 